Just yesterday, we brought you the story of a Syrian schoolyard scandal in Calgary. Migrants throwing fist-sized rocks at their peers, getting physical with the girls, and telling infidel teachers that they'd be better off dead. Well, today, another region, Canada's Thames Valley School Board in southwestern Ontario. New documents obtained from the rebel media through an access to information request show yet another Syrian student scandal playing out on our taxpayer-funded schoolyards. This time, though, in central Canada. Now, before I begin, some background. When it comes to schools in southwestern Ontario, the Canadian media has only had good things to say about Syrian migrants enrolled there, like this piece from the London Free Press. It paints a rosy picture at Eagle Heights Elementary School, where 10% of the student population is made up of Syrian migrants. Stories of children eagerly doing their classwork and singing our national anthem. To media, teachers at Eagle Heights Elementary describe their school as a, quote, safe place for the Syrian students. But what about the other students? Well, email transactions between teachers, they tell a different story. Like this one. This Eagle Heights teacher has Syrian student stresses so severe, he had to bring it up with the board. In this email asking for an extension of special classroom support, the teacher writes, one of the Syrian students continues to demonstrate aggression in the classroom and out in the yard. For example, shoving, hitting the other students. Classroom staff have indicated that the most challenging times remain during transitional periods where concerns for safety continue. Wait a second, concerns for safety, but I thought Eagle Heights was a, quote, safe place. And yet, Eagle Heights reported several more incidences in the documents that we obtained, like this email. A new Syrian migrant in grade three is presenting very aggressively and needs one-on-one -on -one support to be safe. Later in that email, the teacher writes about a different Syrian student who is also acting aggressively, screaming and hurting the other students. With more than 12 new students arriving in just one day and more on the way, the teacher says, the dynamics have changed. We are in a situation at Eagle Heights where safety is such a concern. The recent influx of new students has created additional pressures on teachers, educational assistants, parents, and students. Believe me, she writes, there are many new Syrians that are posing risks and our staff is doing the best that they can. But Eagle Heights Elementary isn't the only school experiencing safety concerns. Remember, our access to information request is at the board level in Ontario where several schools reported incidences that they determined were serious enough to relay them to their administrative superiors. Like this note from a staff member describing difficulties with Syrian students as young as those enrolled in senior kindergarten. The school is experiencing a great deal of physical aggression that does not seem to be decreasing with time or strategies in place. More staff, more strategies, but it doesn't matter. The Syrian students are still lashing out. And another email, again, outlining aggression and a new set of priorities since the Syrian students were brought into the classroom. Our needs are increasing with regards to inattention, aggression, separation, anxiety, you name it. Who cares about learning English or math? These kids are not school ready, most of them anyway. Yeah, who has time for English or math when you're busy dealing with all the aggressive Syrian students in your elementary school? But with all these kids acting out, you gotta wonder, are any of them receiving punishment? You know, the sort of stuff you'd expect if Canadian kids were creating safety concerns in the classroom. Only one email exchange from the 60 we obtained referenced school suspensions for Syrian students. But later in that same email, it becomes unclear if that suspension, any of the suspensions, ever came to fruition. And the double standards, a special accommodation, yeah, it doesn't end there. A record of minutes from morning staff meetings reveal Muslim students are allowed to leave early on Fridays so that they can go pray. Gee, I wonder if other kids at taxpayer-funded secular schools in Ontario, you know, the kids from non-Muslim households, I wonder if they receive a pass to get out of class early ever.
It's a system of double standards, one set of rules for the Canadian kids and another for the Syrian students. And these double standards, well, they aren't just being applied in southwestern Ontario schools, but homes there as well. One document from the information the rebel obtained says even Children's Aid Society applies a different set of standards when it comes to Syrian families. One staff member shared that a small working group has been put together with Children's Aid Society, the Muslim Resource Center, and herself to work on training and some protocols to deal with the anticipated increase in Children's Aid calls related to the Syrian newcomer families. But there is a cultural piece to this as well. The staff member shared that all school staff still have to, a duty to report, but it has been suggested that if a call is placed, they mention that the concern is related to a Syrian newcomer family and Children's Aid will mobilize a different team, realizing that there are different cultural norms and a culturally sensitive piece to these families. Children's Aid, whose chief purpose is to protect young children from abuse, you know, because it's against the law in this country to abuse your children. So where do the different cultural norms come into play? Would a Syrian father beating his child receive certain cultural sensitivity where a Canadian father would not? So safety concerns in the classroom, no mention of consequences for bad behavior, a system of double standards at home and in the schoolyard. And yet the Syrian students just keep pouring in. Just like the schoolyard scandals I reported from in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and just yesterday, Calgary, teachers in southwestern Ontario portrayed themselves as being totally bombarded, desperate for more resources. Here's one principal who describes calling the board in a frenzy. Today we were overwhelmed, that's the reason for the panic phone call, as we had 10 new Syrians today alone. It looks like there's no end in sight. Well, Principal, Canada's federal government has some news for you. If you thought that 10 Syrians in one day was enough to stir panic, enough to overwhelm your school system, things are about to get a lot harder. Because Southwestern Ontario, including your own school board's district, is about to get a shipment of more Syrian migrants, 6,000 to be precise, and that's just this autumn alone. In the meantime, I'm still waiting on comment from this school board as it relates to their own version of this Syrian schoolyard scandal playing out across our nation. And I'd still urge them to contact me because from the looks of it, things are only going to get worse. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. Like what you just saw? Click here and become a member. Watch full episodes of my show on the hunt at the Rebel.media.